Aquarius, Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading, general readings. This is the third time I've started this reading. Um, I'm very amused by this whole situation. Uh, so let's see here. Um, if I don't catch your wavelength, uh, check your other major placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button because um, it makes me happy and also helps other people uh, um, find the channel already cards came out there were a lot of them first card we got I'm going to talk about here is Akasha your guidance is divinely guided it's just a heads up heads up pay attention something here uh if oh, yeah, that's hard with the general reading that's hard because you know I'm saying take what works and leave what doesn't and this card is like something here is very important and it underscores this message so um, we have from our Oracle Mystical Moments deck, Elixir of Life. This is deep pleasure, taking great deep pleasure in having a body, taking care of your body, nurturing your body healthfully, um, making sure that you're enjoying and you're loving um, you being an incarnated being and being in a body and being um, on earth and, and rooted to this earth. Um, rooted. We're not rooted. We're legged and footed um but being footed into this earth and 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 all the joys and pleasures of having a body and making sure that your body isn't just a source of of pain or um a workhorse or um that that you you know forced to do a bunch of stuff through life uh, but that you're actually taking care of it and feeling really good in it and making sure that you're feeling uh, you're in touch with um, your five senses and absorbing um, the joys and pleasures of being alive through those five senses. We also have soul family here calling in your soul tribe. I absolutely adore this card. You don't have to do it alone. Call in your tribe. Here's um, people here to help you, people here to assist you, people here to connect with you and hold your hand and and just, um, I love uh, Ram Dass's, um, we're all just here walking each other home. So you're finding people you can connect with that, um, that you can, that you feel good around and that can provide mutual support uh, for you during this time. Um, be bold, make the first move, Cardinal Moon. So this is either planning a move or planning to do something. Um, taking action, not necessarily taking brash action, but bold action, planning for something that maybe you don't even know is coming for sure, but preparing for something, um, connecting, making a move, maybe even making a bold move to connect with somebody or something. This elixir of life is really reminding me of... Um, hmm, I've been doing a lot of um, thinking and, and around uh, Reich's ideas of the amoeba and uh, most of us would last like not even five minutes as an amoeba because amoebas um, just as I don't I I'm remembering one that I picked up on the beach the other day it was on this rock and I moved not the other day this summer and I moved the rock around and it was hot and sunny and the amoeba just kept moving away from the sun and into the shade into the moist bottom part because it would die if it was up here. Um, it didn't sit there and think, um, I should probably stay in the sun even though I feel very uncomfortable. It just moved towards what was life-giving, towards the part that was life-giving. Um, many of us have our, our, our thinkers um, overthinking things and keeping us in situations that are not life-giving and keeping us in positions uh, that are uncomfortable, that if we were an amoeba, we would we would be dead. Um, so it just seems really funny. I'm this complex being, and yet there's this basic idea of life of moving towards not comfortable, like stagnating comfortable, but moving towards life, moving towards what, what delights and what feels good and feeling good in your body. So this elixir of life is really about moving towards what delights you and what feels good and what feels good in your body. And like good, like, like enlivening, not comfortable because we're definitely 
we've got North Node here. We're definitely stepping out of a comfort zone and coming up with new ways of doing things. One of these new ways you might be wanting to do things is to move towards that which makes you feel alive, that which makes you happy and, and joyful to have incarnated in this body and, and in this lifetime um, and moving towards that. That is the main driving principle of life is that we're moving towards what we love. We're moving towards what makes us feel alive because because we're alive. And how do we sustain being alive? By moving towards what makes us feel even more alive and happy. And this is a, something we can do with our thoughts. This is something we can do with our emotions. This is something we can do with our relationships, moving towards relationships that make us feel more alive and, and happy to be here. And this is what we can do uh, to, with work, with um, with hobbies, with anything. We're moving towards something where, you know, you can envision that amoeba moving towards sort of the life for the amoeba. It was the life-giving shade. It was the moisture and the uh, the life-giving moisture here. And that's where that's where it, it felt most comfortable. I think it was an amoeba. I don't know what it was. It was like a brown spot that just kind of moved. Um, and it moved towards whatever situation was going to keep it alive, whatever, and, and whatever felt good, right? Because it didn't have like this um, complex mech brain up there, like sorting things out. It was just I move towards what, what feels like life to me. So stepping out of your comfort zone, you may have gotten very comfortable someplace, but let us not confuse that with being alive and living, um, being comfortable, and let us not confuse safety and like perfect safety. There's there's a safety that's, that is life-giving and, and is exciting, and then there's a safety that's, um, that's sort of death and, and uh, comfort and... Um, stagnation so we're not moving we're moving away from stagnation and towards something that makes us feel in our bodies alive and better and it could be moving towards relationships that make us feel more alive and make us feel better or it could be um and and we could be needing to make that movement towards um a friendship or somebody that that make we feel good around that we feel alive around and really paying attention to that wisdom of our bodies to to let us know, you know, because we are, you know, in some ways related to the amoeba. So that principle should still, you know, largely applies to us. I mean, it's it's hard because there's like things to think through and 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 survival can feel very complicated in modern society and less like but but your intuition is still going to be able to navigate through through this i mean you've been here long enough that even if your brain hasn't figured it out you know how to stay alive your intuition does and it's going to lead you and you're being led by things that make you feel more alive and things that make you feel feel good and feel um happy and better all right, Aquarius, this is your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, your to-do list, and your possible outcome. Whew! I love most of this reading, and then part of it has me a little bit confused and discombobulated. Okay. Um, in your recent past... Let's see. Ooh. Your only major arcana here is the devil. It's possible outcome, bondage addiction I think we're going to try to avoid that though cuz like when I'm talking about you know going towards what feels good it's definitely not addiction or um or something that robs us of our ability to move towards other things that are life-giving and good right because that's what addiction does is it it prevents us from being able to make other choices that um, do feel better for us. So, oh no, we have the hermit too. So, so you're getting in touch. You're getting in touch. That's our other major arcana with who you are. You've had a period of um, dealing with the hermit here. This is Fra St. Francis of Assisi, a very unique path, step by step. You've had to get very, cl very much in touch with who you are, with what you want, your life path has been revealed in, in or your path here through this uh, navigating this has been revealed very step by step. No overall picture was given. No, 
no uh, grand vista, no map, no road map. It was just you getting in touch with how you feel, what you think, and taking little baby steps piece by piece forward through your life, um, just knowing what you think. No idea where this is leading, where this is going, why you want this, why, what it is this like you getting in touch with how you feel and stepping forward, moving, moving through life by one step at a time, what feels good, what brings me life. I mean, St. Francis of Assisi had a really, um, had a lot of opposition and some really rough times uh, getting to the point where he's like a saint that talks to animals. This is not like what we were doing in elementary school, talking to animals. So how does he get from where he's supposed to be where society is telling him where he's supposed to be to the very unique and ultimately very honored place of where he ends up. He does that by um, by disobeying when he needs to disobey. When it, He does that by just being really, really in touch and not resisting the parts of himself that want to move him forward through, through what he loves and what he wants to do. So then we move to um, Eight of Coins here. Whew, some absorbing work, doing what you love, being able to put yourself into this, putting yourself into the work, being on your path, being on your true path, uh, putting in a lot of work and really enjoying that work and identifying with that work. Um, and even if even if this isn't like your identity work or whatever, or, or you know, the there's like jobs we do and then there's careers that we really identify with. So even if it isn't one of those careers where if you're at a party and someone says, so what do you do? And then you tell them and then they think they know something about you and you're like, no, that's actually just a job for me. My soul does this, but my, my, my rent needs this. So, um, so even though, even if it was just to pay the rent or is just to pay the rent, it is, it is, there's something about it that's absorbing you and you're able to put some part of yourself into that and, um, and and do and do that so there's some some a lot of work being put into something it's very absorbing work you're very focused you're not really very uh focused on everything that's going on around you you're focused on your work what you need to get done uh and and the, it's it's very absorbing at this point what you are your hopes your fears your inner landscape what you're dealing with seven of cups here this is um lots of options prioritizing you may have so much work going on here that you might need to be prioritizing and this may stress you out uh prioritizing um you know because every time we prioritize we prioritize values right it's like um am i valuing uh, for example, for my own life, I am made completely of side gigs. Uh, so some of those side gigs I really like and some of them I, are, are just okay, right? Um, so uh, so prioritize-wise, do I prioritize the side gigs that pay the most or do I prioritize the side gigs that I like the most, right? So this is where, you know, that sort of example from my own life is prioritizing things, um, what are you, because it's, it's about a value judgment, like do I need to, what am I valuing right now? Am I valuing... Um, you know, how something makes me feel or am I valuing, you know, how having a roof over my head makes me feel because that makes, that's a special feeling too, right? Um, so seven of cups, having to prioritize, there's a little bit of stress, um, and there's some debate. There's some inner debate about what to do, how to do this, how to prioritize. Look, here we have our little debate teams. They're going to face off about which of these values is highest. So you've got some sort of inner debate going on, uh, or you don't want to have one, but but you're worried you might soon face one about what to prioritize, how to how to prioritize it, uh, each weighing the value of each item uh, to you and to your life, and having some sort of inner debate or inner struggle about which is the best, which is the right one. Um, so making choices. Oh, okay. In your environment, we have Knight of Cups reverse. So this could be a lack of emotional communication coming through, a lack of communication at all coming through, not understanding. Uh, the nights are going to be communication and movement. So there might not be any movement in some sort of part of your life. Could be love life or could be just communication, emotional connection and communication. There might not be a lot of movement towards that going on right now. Um, and, a lot, uh, and you might not be moving in a direction towards towards a relationship or towards um, emotional communication. That, that could just be not what's happening. It could also be that there's some very um, 
uh, immature emotional communication that goes on right now or is happening right now, or the, if the communication is happening, it doesn't involve emotions and feelings right now. It's not about feelings and how anybody feels. You may be looking for that. You may be wanting that. Um, and there may be a, a sense of some of these decisions. Um, where are your feelings? How do you feel? Where are your feelings in these decisions? What, how do you feel? And, and um, you may be trying to leave that part out. Um, there, may, there may just be a lot of calculations and decisions about work, about money, about uh, priorities, and you may be leaving the emotional part out of it and how you feel part out of, out of the equation. Um, or there could just be some really um, immature communication going on here. Um, in your environment, or people just not talking about their feelings. There could be a lot of feelings going on here and people are just not talking about them. Um, two of cups. In your environment, you have kindred spirit, soulmate. Look at this. Aww. Oh my God. Soul family and two of cups. These are the same card, different suits um, or different, different decks. Um, so soul family, you don't have to do it alone calling in your tribe. Looks like, looks like there is somebody here. There's somebody here that that's a kindred spirit that you're sharing with. You're able to share with pretty openly. There's a mutuality to it. There's a mutual vulnerability to it. Um, and some, some mutual sharing. So this isn't a one-sided thing. This isn't just work. This isn't, there's, there's some sort of, uh, deep connection, if not soulmates, kindred spirits, at least. So there's something kindred in your environment. There's a kindred spirit here, uh, that may, it may feel very good to connect with them. And the, your path to this person may have not had an overall map. It may not have, um, been very clear what was going to happen, but you've had to just follow your heart. And there's something about, um, about this kindred relationship that's, that's coming in here. Um, I do like the hermit card here with the step out of your comfort zone because that's exactly what the hermit card does and it's step by step out of your comfort zone it's not it's step by step out of what's expected step by step out of your comfort zone step by step by what you're supposed to be doing um, and in some ways I think this may have set, have, have led you to to your tri your soul tribe or some sort of soul connection here um, your to-do list is five of swords oh, shit. You got to make some difficult choices. There's difficult choices. This thing that is on your heart of how to, what to prioritize, who to prioritize, how to do this, uh, this debate, you're going to have to make some choices, some difficult choices about what to prioritize, who to prioritize, what do you value, what prioritizing work, which work are you going to prioritize, which, um, which job are you going to prioritize? <laughs> like I was the example I was saying, this is it's a difficult decision between a rock and a hard place. And I think you have to choose you. The situation, uh, maybe it's, you know, there, there are going to be losses incurred. There's no good answer. There's no, I mean, obviously we've got a debate team here. We've got two of them. They, they both come up with good, good reasons, good excuses, good, um, good perspectives, good logic here but you're going to have to make some sort of difficult choice and it's not going to be easy and it's not going to be clear. I mean, it's going to, oh, man. There's some difficult ideas you have to work through some difficult options and difficult communication. And you have to choose what your priority is. In between a rock and a hard place, there's no good options. Man, everything else is so great. What? There, there is a lot of, uh, you know, you're working on something. There's a lot of options here. I think you're trying to leave how you feel out of it. But where you're at, where you're going to be at, is making some difficult choices. Stepping out of your comfort zone. That's all this is. Stepping out of your comfort zone, making some difficult decision, a difficult choice and a difficult decision. Losses will be incurred. That cannot be helped. That's just part of life and being here and uh, what has to happen. So difficult choices here. Um, and then we have the devil energy as a possible outcome, right? So um, I feel like if you don't make... If you don't choose what's best for you, you're going to end up in a situation of bondage, being stuck, 
Maybe even if you don't step out of your comfort zone, you may be stuck in a routine or stuck in a situation that, um, that is really not, that isn't, isn't good. I mean, I think what we're looking out for here is any kind of tra entrapment or, or bondage or getting stuck or trapped somewhere. So maybe this is a warning of what you need to prioritize is prioritizing, um, uh, prioritize, you could need to prioritize a relationship. You could need to prioritize, um, what feels good and stepping out of your comfort zone. This is not at all at, at odds with what feels good. Um, it'll feel uncomfortable, but you know, what brings you life. Um, you know, what brings you to life. And if you do not choose what brings you to life, I mean, I'd love to see the lover's card here, honestly, but if you don't choose what's going to bring you, you could end up very trapped and in bondage to, to, a, a situation that isn't healthy for you and doesn't feel good. Yeah. And prevents you from being able, uh, robs you of some kind of freedom and prevents you from being able to move in towards the direction. So I think as you sort of make this decision that the five of swords represents, uh, you need to keep in mind what feels good and what fuels you and, and the direction you want to go in. And then we have here, Sister of Shambhala. Put your faith in the light and believe that good things can happen and will happen. We do not need to deny darkness, but nor do we need to place our minds there. There are lighter dwelling places into which our minds can settle. I like how we're talking about minds and choices we make with our minds about what feels good um, lighter dwelling places. This is exactly the amoeba principle um, as it relates to what we choose to think about. Trust in the spring that follows winter. So good things are coming. Good things are coming and I think you may need to make your choices based on that clear understanding that good things are coming and you need to move towards one believing. If that makes you feel good that good things are coming, move towards that. And it would be kind of weird if you didn't think that that was, um, move towards that, move towards faith, move towards the belief that good things are coming, uh, move towards, um, move towards what makes you feel good. And in the full faith that, um, that something good is coming for you. There are lighter dwelling places into which our minds can settle. So I think that that's a lot of what this reading is, is choosing that, uh, choosing hope and choosing what feels good. Um, for both our minds and our bodies. All right, Aquarius. Hope you have a great week. Thanks for watching.